Mr. Chairman, members of the board, yep. Dr. Casey. You all will recall that uh, at our last board meeting, Mr. Engel requested that we give you all a um, update on the operations of economic development and then in turn the role of uh, the Economic Development Authority. I'm prepared to do that today. I'm mm -hmm. going to enlist uh, Deputy Director Karen Allward and Project Manager uh, Jake Allward to help me with, uh, Jake Elder to help me with this. Um, we have a slide deck here of 104 slides. So it's going to move pretty quickly. It's going to okay. be like an action movie. So break out the okay. popcorn. Um, Mr. Harris is concerned that I'm not going to get, he's got the last floor slides in this show, and he's concerned I'm not going to give him enough time. So okay. we're going we're gonna to move fairly quickly. Okay. All right? All right, and this is what I'm going to tell you about. <laughs> First, starting with us. It is our goal to be a leader in the profession of economic development, for Chesterfield to lead the nation and the, and the quality of what um, our profession provides. Our, our mission is the mission of uh, growing business and capital investment and creating jobs. This is our current org chart. We are working with HR to change this a little bit to get more compact. As you look, it's a, it's a whole lot of separate islands there. We've got a lot of things going on, a lot of people in charge of different things, but it's really no bench. Uh, but uh, we're working that you'll see a new one from us probably for the end of this year. But uh, the thing I need to point out is clearly you see that I report to Dr. Casey and Dr. O'Casey and then through you, to you. Uh, we, we are a department, we're not the authority. Um, we track data daily, continuously, compounding that data to do two things, to find out where Chesterfield's economy is going, how it's doing, what, what's going on, and then to track what we are doing and how it is affecting that economy, whether we're doing good, whether we need to change the programs and what we do. Those are the two reasons we, chase, we, we crunch that data. I'm going to share some of that data with you right now. The first is from our high rate uh, during the pandemic of 2020, of April 2020, of 10.7, we are down to 3.7% unemployment. We are quick, quickly, very quickly, going into a situation from being a high unemployment problem to a labor shortage problem. Um, I checked with business, uh, with Jobs EQ just today. There are 7,799 open positions in Chesterfield advertised as of today, okay? So it's, it's gonna move the other way very quickly. <coughs> this um, is the, the current job as of December 2020, the current number of total jobs in the, in the county. Uh, two things I wanna point out here. One, this does not accurately depict people who are um, working from home or, or working remotely. It's, it's tracking their job wherever their job is, whether it's New York or Henrico or downtown or San Francisco, but they may be sitting here as a worker. So it does not depict that. We're working to try to figure out what that number is, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But just to, to let you guys know, if those 7,799 jobs that are posted right now are filled in Chesterfield, we would be back to our 2018th record high of employment in Chesterfield. Okay. <clears throat> uh, weekly average wage is up. Um, local sales tax revenue is up as well, and I go back to that remote worker thing, okay? People working from home are, are a part of the reason this is up. It's, a part, it's very much the reason we're chasing to figure out who they are and where they are and how we keep them, you know? Um, remote working has been good for Chesterfield. Home sales uh, and volume are up, and home sales and prices are up. That, we expect that to continue. Um, once again, back to that workforce, that workforce need. Not everybody, we, we lead the community in single family housing all, all the time. Quality, quality single family. We need to offer alternatives to that, to the workforce, to the people we need to attract. We're getting there, we're doing that very quickly. Um, building permits, um, we're strong through uh, 2020. Um, I point out to you, if you look at the 7,000, uh, I mean the 4,700, so is 302 million in value, and the 779 uh, permits uh, commercial are, is 419 in volume. That that can kind of give you a hint of how com what commercial development means to us. Uh, uh, 
our job investment, even during the, the, the pandemic, uh, we were able to announce 10 projects, seven new ones, three expansions that created over 106 million in capital investment and 259 jobs. All right, I'm gonna let Karen take over and do our programs. Mr. Chairman. Just to, just to note, I, uh, Garrett, as you're talking, I, I did see a, an article in the Wall Street Journal talking about the labor force over the next decade and how we're basically set up to be in a pretty tight labor market uh, for some time, which, if you play that out, will mean uh, more emphasis on work environment, uh, pay, benefits, and these sorts of things for, for employees, not just obviously here in the Chesterfield County government, which we do a good job, an excellent job of, but also in the, in the private sector. And so I just throw that out there. So, um, it's something to keep in mind uh, for everybody. And, and this teleworking thing, uh, you know, I know that it's pretty easy to keep a relationship going with, you know, Zoom calls and, and uh, Microsoft Teams and things like that, those are great tools. But to build new relationships is, uh, I think, harder. And certainly some businesses like sales and things like this, much harder to do that, you know, over a video screen. So it's going to be interesting to see how all this shakes out. Yeah, we are, we are clearly going to be in a competition when it comes to economic development for labor. And I'll talk to you a little bit later about our value proposition. And that value proposition is also the quality of our community as it attracts workers. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Casey. I'm going to share with you information on the five core activities that we do as a department that support our mission to encourage capital investment and job growth. I'll tell you a little bit about each of those. Business attraction, that's the program most people are familiar with. We're trying to bring new companies to locate in Chesterfield County. Um, we do that through partnerships with the Virginia Economic Development Partnership and the Greater Richmond Partnership. We do that by going out and calling on companies uh, that are poised for growth and that might need a new location, might need to expand their location, or might want a first time uh, North American USA uh, location. We've been very successful with international companies that come here, open a sales office, and then grow. We do this very strategically. We're really targeting small and medium businesses. So we're, we will go after large companies, but our sweet spot is those companies that are small, medium sized, and just really ready to take off. We track all that activity through Salesforce, which is a customer relation management system that we utilize to kind of connect all the dots. Um, even through 2020, our project activity was strong. Um, projects, are those that are, uh, have a timeline, a defined uh, need, and have done some due diligence. We work with, uh, the, again, the state and uh, regional groups to help generate leads. Um, and then we work active projects that come to us directly. Um, you can see that we had 208 active leads with GRP and VEDP and 19 active projects. So even though 2020 was a pandemic, a lot of businesses took that opportunity to do some due diligence and look strategically at how they were going to grow. Um, while we do go after new companies, we spend a lot of time taking care of our existing businesses. Uh, existing business and retention is a key component of our activities. Uh, if you're in sales, they always say it's easier to keep a customer than find a new one. So we spend a lot of time behind the scenes calling on companies, taking phone calls on companies, doing surveys, doing outreach to them to find out how they're doing, are there challenges or obstacles or resources that we can connect them to or obstacles we can minimize. So we work a lot with our existing companies. We also work a lot with entrepreneurship and growing our own. Um, more than 99% of Chesterfield County business establishments meet the Code of Virginia definition of a small business. Now that's 250 or less, so that some will say that's a large number, but I would say a good percentage of them, more than 60% fall in about the 50 or fewer employees. 
And we do that again by connecting them to resources, helping identify obstacles that they might have. We offer workshops, access to capital. We actually partner with our procurement department to help them grow their business by selling to government, state, local, and federal. And of course, um, site selection and permit process when they get to that point. When a COVID pandemic came, we refocused some of our uh, energies to supporting programs that will support these businesses through the pandemic. Um, we um, offered 439 grants in two programs. We had three rounds of back to business grants, and then we had one specifically for childcare providers to help them stay open to provide childcare services for our essential workers. And that meant $5.2 million into our local economy. We also created a um, website application to help drive uh, citizens to restaurants and businesses that were pivoting their model and now offering delivery and curbside that typically didn't. So I'm not talking about the subways or the McDonald's, I'm talking about make the reservations, sit down. And so that was a um, GIS oriented uh, application that you could find where they were offering those programs. And the next follow up to that was let's take it outside Chesterfield, which when the guidance allowed for outside dining and some of our local businesses were not prepared for that, we worked with our community development division partners to streamline a permit process to get them permitted to have outside dining and also get them the certification they needed for the ABC agency to provide alcohol in those outside settings. We also worked very closely with a number, more than 40 regional partners through the pandemic. We met weekly, sometimes twice a week, and we launched some initiatives under the banner of Ford uh, RVA. One in particular was um, we provided more than 5,000 PPE kits to small businesses that included masks, hand sanitizer, gloves, so they could safely start the reopening process. One of the things we do a lot of work, again, is connecting these businesses to resources to help them grow their business, to help them help themselves. We do that through a number of networking events, seminars, and workshops. But we do that in a very uh, wide partnership with private and public organizations. One of the uh, programs we did with CARES Act money was a workshop specifically for businesses that we saw were not successful in getting grants because they just weren't ready. They weren't financially uh, aware of where they were in their business and they couldn't provide documents that they needed for uh, obtaining those grants. So we, had, uh, we partnered with the county's Learning and Performance Center to use our ULEARN platform to offer a series of workshops by some very well-known providers. And they also were able to get counseling at the end, one-on-one. -on -one. This is an example of the partnerships we have. Um, so for example, I mentioned Learning and Performance. We work very closely with the libraries, the Meadowdale Library and the North Courthouse Library and our small business centers there. They're a big partner with us. The Chesterfield Chamber, of course, is one of our strongest partners. Through the pandemic, they were right along with us in our initiatives. Garrett serves on the board. Jake and I participate in the Government Affairs Committee. BizWorks is our small business incubator. Um, we partner with them, the county funds them, and they were able to, in last year, serve um, 35 members and those members were able to generate $8 million in revenues and add 45 jobs during the pandemic. Um, one other I'll point out is the Central Virginia African American Chamber of Commerce. We were one of the founding partners in that organization. And now Letitia Jenkins in our office serves uh, with them. Um, at, the at the request of the board, you authorized us to create a new position for small business development. Um, yes. Sure. And that was in response to the needs of businesses that just did not know how to navigate the permit process. They were getting hung up on something as simple as getting a signed permit to if they really did need to move to a new location or wanted to build a new facility, they did not know where to start. So we are alongside those businesses through the zoning, site plan process, and building permit process. Everything from planning and utilities um, to again reviewing zoning cases. And that's been very successful and uh, we are there. We also look for trends. We look to see if there's anything in those processes 
that keeps coming up as a barrier so that we can bring that forward and look at how we can resolve that. Currently, we're tracking 17 commercial site plans that equates to about 1.5 million in uh, new square footage. Um, that's a snapshot. It could be a few more site plans, a few less site plans, but the important key thing is that position is focused on that, and we're a partner in that, and we're going along through that process with all of these uh, plans that come through. So through all these activities, last year during 2020, we, um, touched, we met with 105 existing businesses. Um, there was a silver lining to the pandemic. Uh, some of the businesses is a very timely thing to get in to visit them. You have to go through safety protocols, but you can do a Zoom very easily. So they would take a meeting uh, when in other times they really just don't have the time. We had uh, more than 20,000 small business touches. That includes the work with site plan and the small business through the permitting process, all the work we do with our workshops, our business counseling, et cetera. And then we had 122 individual business consultations. That's one-on-one -on -one helping a business through a particular need. Sports tourism is another activity that we are involved in, in our department at a different level. It's really making sure that when these tourists and citizens are using our wonderful venues, that they're staying here and spending their money here, and that we're monitoring and making sure we have the right uh, assets in place to have a good experience for them. So we're a prominent player in the region. In 2020, we were scheduled to have 54 events. We were able to successfully have 33 events, and we're, uh, the events for this year are strong right now. That translated into the uh, hotel occupancy. Everything was down, as you would expect, during the pandemic, but Chesterfield fared a little better because of those successful sports events that were still able to happen. In the region, the uh, sports activities that happen here in Chesterfield result in about $84 million in economic impact. And you can see 191,000 come to the region uh, last year, and 71,000 of those were at our venues in Chesterfield. Real estate development is another new position, and new as in just a few months. But really, this position is designed to provide more detailed real estate services to not just our department and the EDA, but also to other county departments and schools. Um, that position is responsible for doing research and analysis related to acquisitions and depositions, valuing, determining potential and properties, and it's really positioning us to be more strategic in how the county overall handles the acquisition, development, and disposition of real estate. And then we have many uh, tools to help us get the word out. We have our uh, presence on every social channel. We put out specific information. Our business information site is designed for site consultants to get what they need when they're considering us. Uh, business news making our announcements. Our site, My Biz Starts Here, which is a really well-used site for businesses that are just thinking about starting up. And then finally, again, sharing information like our learning opportunities. We have an e-blast that goes out once a quarter. Um, Experience Chesterfield, which helps people figure out what they're going to do when they are here and helps our citizens know what's going on in the region. And then some site-specific ones like our data center site. And then we do our everyday other things, community tours, news and information, research and data, workforce programs. We're very involved in workforce. I serve on the Capital Region Workforce Board, and we are fortunate to have our um, workforce center on Turner Road, GRTC. Um, you know, they don't quite come to Turner Road. <laughs> so, you know, uh, when the uh, board, the workforce board selected that location, it was with the hope that eventually as we expand our transit, we can get more people to that center. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Garrett to talk about our targets. That's something we probably should do is work with GRTC. I'm glad they were just here to see if we can get them to that site. It's not that far away. As you know, we chose that site years ago for workforce. And so I think that's something we should look into. That should be easy to accommodate. Uh, but, but thanks for that. Point. We're working on it. <laughs> 
Mr. Chairman, you'll find that so many of the, the workforce that we want to have trained and want to get trained are not our high school students or they're adult, working adults and being able to connect them to the training is important. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about our targets. Um, we, um, as I, you guys have heard me say many, many times, we're going to help any business that wants to come to Chesterfield, grow in Chesterfield, or uh, create themselves in Chesterfield. We're going to help them all. But when we go after businesses, we are very targeted about how we spend our money in chasing businesses. And we've selected these targets because they create the capital investment that we want, the job creation that we that the county wants. Um, they help with the quality of life. It's very important. We also um, chase them because currently they're the expanding. You, you want to be chasing people who actually need you. Uh, and then we just because we have a competitive advantage uh, in, in these, these sectors. I think the most important thing I bring in, uh, in our targets is uh, we make stuff. We are the dominant manufacturing community in the Richmond region. We are in the we are the dominant manufacturing community in the Virginia, in all of Virginia. The number one payroll, the top ten of every other thing we produce. We make stuff. We we have a workforce that knows how to make stuff, and we want to continue to make stuff. I always have to brag on the largest hummus plant in the world, <laughs> and the largest noodle plant in the U.S. The United States and on DuPont's largest facility in the United States. So three key dominant, all of them employing, uh, you know, close to a thousand people so, or more. Now I want to talk a little bit about that value proposition I brought up earlier. Um, our value proposition sets us up for our targets. The, um, there, you can see all of those things and I could go through each one of them and tell you why we excel at that value proposition, but I want to work on two, the workforce and the quality of life. We are the largest populous county in the region, therefore we have the largest potential workforce in the region, so our workforce demographic numbers help us attract intention when we compete for economic development projects. We need to continue to enlarge our workforce, and that brings us to the quality of life. Quality of life, the quality of our schools, our libraries, our parks, our entertainment venues, our retail, our transportation network, all of it, everybody, everybody that works for you is in the economic development business because all of that is about the quality of life. And the quality of life does not only help us attract the business, it helps us attract the workers that the businesses are chasing. It helps us attract citizens and their enjoyment. It helps us attract visitors. It's the value proposition across the board for Chesterfield. It, it works for all, for all. Um, I will switch to uh, that value proposition is the primary reason we're in the we're in the hunt and we're in competitive that that is however we're in a very competitive business we have to be up on our incentives we offer fair and equitable incentives where both the county and the uh, um, companies uh, can prosper and get going sooner faster and, and larger um, and we are across the board what we try to do in Chesterfield is make our incentives solve a problem we just don't have boxed incentives that if you do this you get that we we say what's the what's the preventing you from doing this and how can we help and that's how we you know incentivize those projects um i am going to let jake go over the recent announcements and projects and development activity it's uh it's exciting bunch of stuff going on so Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Dr. Casey. I feel like now's the part of the tour where I'm supposed to ask, does anybody need a restroom break, coffee break, you know? I think Matt Harris might get upset with me, though, if uh, I slow down at all. But I get the exciting opportunity of uh, presenting kind of those projects where the rubber meets the road uh, with capital investment and job creation uh, in the county. So we're going to go through these somewhat quickly. Um, this is a recent manufacturing expansion in the county, uh, Super Radiator Coils. Uh, it's located in the Southport. Um, industrial area. They are a long-standing Chesterfield business, uh, have been in the county since 1980, uh, and you probably know, notice uh, their building changes colors a few times because they've done several different expansions, but right now they have a 
1,000 uh, square foot expansion underway uh, that's going to create 50 new jobs. They produce uh, specialty coils that are utilized in a cooling process for manufacturers, data centers, uh, and even some residences. Uh, in Meadowville, uh, we had a recent announcement. Um, the former Capital One data center site uh, was an existing 250,000 square foot facility that Digital Fortress, uh, which is a, a national uh, data center construction company and, and owner, um, they are taking over that facility and actually are going to uh, set up themselves to construct an additional 200,000 square feet. There's only about 18,000 um, square feet that they're going to be able to lease uh, within that facility currently. Um, so they're going to look to quickly expand that site. Uh, near the FedEx facility off of 95 at the Woods Edge Road, just south of that, um, we've got an 81,000 square foot um, outdoor glass company. Um, they do specialty glass products. Uh, they don't manufacture the glass itself there, but they add the coating and glazings and do the specialty cutting. Um, so folks that are in the Richmond, DC, Raleigh, uh, Roanoke region that are ordering specialty uh, showers and uh, architectural glass features are going to come through this facility. Um, they're looking at employing about 75,000 um, or 75,000, 75, 000, 75 uh, people. That would be a lot in 81,000 square feet. Yeah, <laughs> that would not be COVID compliant, I don't think. <laughs> um, this is another project in uh, Meadowville that's actually getting ready to start site work. Um, you can see the white top buildings in the background there. That's Amazon and Niagara. Uh, Red Rock Development out of South Carolina is going to do a speculative manufacturing um, and warehouse facility. And you'll see some other spec facilities in here. In Chesterfield right now, spec facilities mean that by the time the steel's going up, your space is being leased. So when we say speculative, it means that <laughs> they haven't leased it yet, but they will within the next um, 12 months. This also shows uh, the digital drive um, road extension project that the EDA is completing that Garrett will touch on uh, a little later. Um, in Midlothian, uh, near Chesterfield Town Center, you can see Costco in the background there. This is a brand new uh, medical office development by Virginia Physicians for Women. Uh, it's 45,000 square feet, state-of-the-art facility. It's also going to be their corporate headquarters. We were able to keep that um, in Midlothian, in Chesterfield. Um, so really excited about that one. It's been under construction for a little while. And a project that, as you'll see in here, several, one that started prior to COVID being planned, but then they decided to still move forward with the project. Um, seeing the need within the region. Um, we certainly have not slowed down at all from an economic development standpoint. Uh, another spec facility that was recently um, leased, uh, this is uh, what we refer to as the Willis Commerce Center. It was developed by Scannell Properties. That's a national distribution developer. Uh, it's a 405,000 square foot uh, building. Um, iFit Health, Health and Fitness is going to lease that entire facility. Well, most people don't know what iFit is, but most people do know what Nordic Track is. And uh, if anybody in the region or along the East Coast is going to order a Nordic Track piece of exercise equipment uh, to get rid of some of that COVID-19 weight, uh, it's going to come through this facility here. Um, also over uh, in the James River industrial area, um, this is a Devon USA building. Uh, they completed uh, several different um, buildings within the James River Logistics Center. Uh, this is a 300,000 uh, square foot plus Amazon last mile delivery station site. And I uh, want to highlight this. This was a great um, job between us and building inspections. Um, the building had already been constructed, uh, but they had the tenant specific needs of having to drive those sprinter vans into this facility. Well, as you can imagine, cutting those cars on and off is something that they're trying to avoid. So they wanted to make sure they had a, a system installed that would pull that um, exhaust air out and be safe. Um, we were able to work with our building inspections department to ensure that met all code requirements. Um, and so that Amazon packages keep getting delivered on time. Uh, just behind that um, facility uh, near where DuPont currently leases a lot of warehouse space, uh, they constructed a, or leased a new um, 113,000 square foot um, space that they house some of their specialty products come through this warehouse and then go out for distribution once they come from their manufacturing facility just off of Route 1. Uh, the Carvana project is another good successful story that uh, a business that reanalyzed the market when COVID hit. Um, they have now begun site work out there, as you can see, going to be a 190,000 square foot facility uh, where they will inspect uh, vehicles and then uh, 
distribute them to point of delivery locations where they will then go from that location um, to the individual's home, or if they want to pick it up at the vending machine that I'm sure some of y'all have seen being constructed off of uh, 95 in, in Richmond. But as you can see here, Margaret Christian is across the street, um, the elementary school, and you can see a lot of the vegetation there that's going to protect this uh, site from uh, the existing roadway and existing residences in that area. Uh, in the Ashton Creek Industrial Park, I uh, wanted to highlight an existing business. Karen went over that program. Uh, C.W. Wright has a current location uh, right outside the, the Shoesmith Landfill on Route 10, and then another smaller location near 295 in Route 10. Uh, they wanted to consolidate their property. They were leasing both of those facilities, uh, and they are the ones that are called upon by Dominion and other electrical providers when anything goes wrong. Um, so they're a great business to have here in Chesterfield County. Uh, they did a brand new office and, and warehouse and storage facility there. You can see some of the landscaping along the front edge. That's going to be a, a very visible area from Rough and Mill, and it's going to be very well landscaped um, so that folks that are traveling through that area uh, still have that um, protection. Uh, again, in the James River Industrial Center, uh, Bissell located there with a 400,000 square foot facility. Anybody buying a vacuum cleaner along the mid-Atlantic region, it's coming through this facility. They recently uh, completed a 200,000-square-foot expansion. You can see the roof change uh, there in the rear. An another project we were excited to see move forward was the Cinema Cafe in Chester. Uh, they, again, planned things before COVID, were actually under construction during COVID, and got open in December uh, which uh, still was during the, the COVID pandemic. Uh, but from what we've heard, they've been successful in a, a unique amenity and experiential uh, retail destination, a um, little bit different than the movie theaters of old. Uh, I haven't been yet, but I've heard great things. Uh, large seats and can order a, a much more full menu of uh, beverage items as well. So good place. That's good to hear. Uh, across the street, you can see Cinema Cafe in the background. This is a... Uh, excellent facility that Bon Secours is doing. It's what they call a full service emergency department, providing emergency services within this area of the county. Um, I know that I've heard uh, Chief Center um, reiterate that, that this was an important addition to this area of the, the county. Um, it's about a 25,000 square foot uh, facility, um, and it's right at the entrance to the Jane at uh, Moores Lake. Another project that Exciting to see, the trend continues. Exciting to see move forward through uh, the COVID pandemic. One of the hardest hit sectors was the hospitality industry. Um, we showed that to you earlier with some of the um, room nights were still stronger than, than some other uh, localities in the region. But this is a Spring Hill Suites project right at 95 and Route 10. I believe, uh, Mr. Engel, you got the opportunity to tour this facility recently. It's 118 rooms. It's also gonna have 5,000 square feet of meeting space. Uh, and there's going to be a overlook behind the BMP retention pond area as well. So a very unique hotel opportunity right at 95 and, and Route 10. Uh, jumping back over, we're, we're going all over the county. I want to make sure everybody uh, knows everything that's going on within the county. That's what I love about my job is I get to, I get to see uh, pretty much all the development that's occurring when it hits uh, our community development departments. But gather co-working space at Winterfield. Uh, they typically had these projects within urban areas. Um, this was one of their first uh, locations uh, in more of a suburban style development, but this is a great mixed use development. I know several people that utilize office space within here. Uh, it's 25,000 square feet, and they're going to have a first floor um, restaurant component that uh, should be uh, coming in to get their building permit uh, shortly. Staying in uh, the Winterfield mixed-use development, this is the uh, retail. Uh, it's about 15,000 square foot of retail, uh, I'll say modern strip center uh, adjacent to Gather. They actually have a cycle bar signed on to lease the space ad adjacent to Gather. So, you know, on your lunch break at Gather, you can run over there and hop on a bike. I know I'm not going to show up at the 5 a.m. class, but maybe some will. Uh, across the street from Winterfield is uh, another mixed-use development in the county showing that uh, we need to continue to provide those, those quality of life, diverse housing opportunities. Uh, this will be first floor uh, commercial space with apartments above and townhomes in the rear. Uh, excited to see that one under construction. Uh, and then I think what we really wanted to highlight in this area is it's going to become one of the more walkable destinations within the county. And probably one of the main reasons is because it's going to have a brewery. 
uh, we, we need to continue to grow our brewery operations here. And, and uh, we're excited to have Triple Crossing. Uh, and next door, Wong's Tacos is going to open a, a 4,000 square foot restaurant. Um, you can see in this image where the pylons have been put in the, the BMP and retention area, they're going to have an overlook and patio area uh, that's going to be one of the largest in the, the region. So excited about that project getting underway as well. Um, staying in the same area across the street, Liz Moore and Associates is a residential retail, um, retail, realtor. Uh, they are based out of Newport News, but they've been bouncing around with different Richmond uh, office locations, and they finally found a good place to call home uh, here at the uh, Publix uh, new development at Charter Colony. And we wanted to highlight this uh, two-story Dairy Queen um, project. And, and the main reason is because we strive to push for quality retail development uh, in Chesterfield County. And I think this is a prime example. Um, the vice president of uh, development for Dairy Queen actually called this their flagship location for the Richmond region. And that's what we want Chesterfield to have. Uh, they, you can see they even have an outdoor uh, fire pit place. Um, so I haven't been yet in one of the first hundred people there that uh, got uh, free ice cream for a year. But oh, I, I did, some Chesterfield. I didn't residents. get a free ice cream, Jake, <laughs> but I did go in there. It is beautiful in there. It's just as nice inside as it is outside. I mean, you look at it like, wow, this is Dairy Queen. This is the best hot dog uh, environment <laughs> I've ever had. So anyway. Well, that's, that's great to hear. We'll have to meet up at the, the DQ Grill and Chill one day. Uh, this is a, a residential um, development, a condominium project, a coal field station. Uh, they've begun site work and are getting ready to start on the uh, initial phase of over 100 um, condos. Uh, again, a housing choice opportunity um, in a very, I'll say, Midlothian village-esque um, area. Uh, we, we know, Ms. Haley, uh, that this was certainly um, a, a project that we're excited to see get started and what it's going to tie into. Um, in the future, it's very close to the Winterfield area and the Midlothian Mines Park. So um, allowing people an opportunity to live and play um, right next to each other. Well, and I think that, that you know, brings up just a really good point to, to point out, too, that one of the first things that will be done is the connectivity of these roads. That's correct. Which is really going to, you know, start to sort of open up this connection and the ability for people to access Midlothian Turnpike in different ways depending right. upon where they're coming from. And so, you know, I've tried to encourage our folks to stay open-minded as we go through these projects and see, you know, as we look down the line further to what we're going to do with transportation issues as well. Yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll let Jesse uh, work, keep working on this. <laughs> Uh, in the Matoka area, uh, if you've been out on the western part of Hull Street recently, you've probably seen the site work beginning for Hidden Wit Brewing Company. Uh, they are a great venture of, of an existing small business uh, owner in Chesterfield County that wanted to start a new venture, uh, came to our office to figure out how to make that happen. Um, they're going to do about a 5,000 square foot um, brewery and event space. Um, they went through the zoning process, have been through the site plan process, have been through the building permit process, uh, but really going to be a great feature that a lot of those folks that live out in the, the western part of the county can make a right out on Hull Street and uh, head on um, that way as opposed to going through all the stoplights on uh, existing Hull Street. A uh, few multifamily uh, developments that we wanted to highlight, the Watkins Center West Apartments, uh, these were the initial 200 apartments. Um, just recently, a site plan was filed uh, for some medical office adjacent to Bon Secours in this area. Uh, so again, injecting some density into an employment center um, where people can live, work, and play. Uh, the Cosby Village um, retail space and, and townhomes and apartments and flats in the uh, back there. I just drove through that facility recently, and it is a very active space behind those apartments. You go through there on a Friday or Saturday evening, and everybody's out. Kids are playing. There's a lot of open space. Uh, and then there's several restaurants and, and retail locations along the frontage. Um, again, injecting density into an area. Um, that hadn't seen additional office development or retail development for quite some time. The Commonwealth Apartments at Commonwealth Center are under construction. Uh, that's well over 200 units with even some carriage-style homes in the back. Tough piece of property that sloped. Um, uh, but there's uh, some unique opportunities there and very close to uh, the, I'll say, experiential uptown alley destination as well. Uh, and two projects that are getting ready to get started, um, the lake at Genito Road and 288. Uh, they came back to uh, the Planning Commission and the board to update 
uh, their zoning case and residential density and phasing plan, uh, but they're getting ready to get started on construction out there. Uh, and then also right down the street here from the um, county complex, uh, the courthouse landing development uh, is in the site plan process. Uh, we're excited to be able to share that they are working uh, with a major medical office user that's looking at 75,000 to 100,000 square feet of medical office as part of that uh, initial development.